Okay, so this is lecture two, uh, body organization. And this is going to be what I covered some in class and I also do some of this in lab. So I'm going to do one big uh, lecture that covers both what I covered in class and in lab. All right, so the first thing you've got to know when we talk about anatomy is we've got to talk about anatomical position. All right, and anatomical position is when you're standing, body straight up erect, your feet slightly apart, and your palms facing forward. Come on. Hang on. Okay. So like this. So here's your, 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 your model. And standing erect, palms forward, feet forward, slightly, um, slightly, feet slightly apart. That's anatomical position. And the reason we use this as anatomical position is because there are two bones in your forearm called the radius and the ulna. And when your palms are forward, your radius and ulna are parallel. If you pronate or turn your hand backwards, those bones will actually cross. And so you don't have a good reference to what is the outside part of the arm, which what part is lateral or away from the body, and which part is medial or toward the body. So that's just the standard. Um, when we talk about anatomy, we have to know some terms. We've got to know direction. We've got to get our bearing. Uh, and the words we use are superior and inferior. That means top and bottom. You may also see cranial or caudal. So anything toward the head is superior. Anything toward the feet is inferior. So for example, you would say the head is superior to the hands. The hands are inferior to the head. Okay. Ventral and dorsal. When you talk about ventral and dorsal, you can also use anterior and posterior. So ventral and anterior is the front side of your body, and dorsal and posterior is the back side <coughs> of your body. So you could say your nose is ventral to your shoulder blades, okay, because it's in the front. Or your shoulder blades are dorsal to your nose because they're behind you. You can use the word medial and lateral. So anytime you use the word medial, you're talking about anything toward the middle of the body. Lateral is toward the outside of the body, okay? So there's, your heart is actually right here. So you would say your heart is in the medial, it's in the midline. So your heart is medial. Your lungs are right here. So you could say your heart is medial to your lungs. You could say your nose is medial to your eyes. If you're talking about away from the, me the midline, you say lateral. So my eyes are lateral to my nose. My ears are lateral to my nose. My nose is medial to my ears. So it's just a way to relate things. Um, if it's somewhere in between, you could say it's intermediate. Like for example, your chest, or um, let's see, like right now my fingers are intermediate to my nose and eyes. Okay, so they're kind of between my nose and eyes. That's intermediate. So we're proximal and distal. And this um, has to do with attachments, or what I call appendages. So you're talking about your arms and your legs. So if it's closest to the trunk or your body, it's proximal. If it's further away from your trunk, it's distal. So your hands are distal to your shoulder. Your feet are distal to your hips. Um, your knee would be proximal to your feet because your knee is closer to your hips than your feet are. Your elbow would be proximal to your fingers because your elbow is closer to your shoulder than your fingers are. Or you could say your elbow is distal to your shoulder because it's further away from your shoulder and your knee is distal to your hip. So it depends on what you're talking about. Um, anyway, if it's closer to the body, it's proximal. If it's away from the body, it's distal when you're talking about arms and legs. Uh, if you're talking about inside and outside, you're talking about superficial and deep. So if it's toward the skin, toward the surface of the body, it's superficial. If it's toward the inside of the body, it's deep. So let's just say here's my heart and here's my skin. You would say the skin is superficial to the heart or the heart is deep to the skin. Okay? So you're relating it from basically inside to outside. Let me go back to one more. 
When you talk about lateral, there's two more words you can use. One is ip c lateral. Lat that's an R. And one is contra lateral. Ipsilateral means on the same side. So my right arm and my right leg are ipsilateral. They're on the same side. Contralateral means on opposite sides. So my right arm and my left leg are contralateral. So you'll see those terms as well. Okay, when we talk about the body, we divide it into two main divisions. We have the axial and the appendicular. Anything that's your head, your neck, your trunk, all that's axial. Uh, anything that's arms and legs, that's uh, appendicular. So when we talk about the bones, we'll talk about the axial skeleton, your cranium, your neck, your vertebra, your ribs, uh, and we'll talk about the appendicular skeleton, which is your arms and your legs. We do the same thing with the muscles. We'll talk about the muscles in the head, the neck, and the thorax, and the chest, and the back, the trunk. will be your axial mu muscles, and then we'll talk about your appendicular muscles of your arms and legs. You also have to have regional terms that designate specific areas. So this is a chart. It's, here, it's for you in the book. Uh, and you basically need to be able to recognize all these, all of these and know where they are. There's little, uh, some little men models in our lab. Uh, you know, I may ask you, tell me what this region is. Tell me what this region is. So all these are fair game. Uh, when we talk about it, we talk about uh, basically big regions and little regions. So for example, the big region of the head, the whole head is cephalic. You can then uh, break that down into frontal, which is your forehead, orbital, your eye, nasal, your nose, oral, your mouth, mental, which means chin. All right, so go through this and make sure you can go through and identify all the regions that are listed on this slide. And make sure that you pay attention that if you go to the back side, some of the words change. For example, on the head now, the back of the head is now occipital, okay? Where the front of the knee was patellar, or pat <coughs> the back of the knee is now popliteal. So make sure you recognize that sometimes a region name changes whether or not it's on the front of the body or the back of the body. All right, we also have to talk about body planes. And this, these are basically flat surfaces, like you've, like you're, it's an imaginary way of cutting a body. Or actually, not imaginary. If you were going to do surgery, you might make a sagittal cut or a transverse cut or a coronal cut. So basically, it's a plane that we use to cut or um, study the uh, anatomy. And the three um, planes, let me go forward just a second. There's three planes. One divides you left and right, so right down the middle. And that's the sagittal plane, okay? One chops you up uh, from top to bottom. It's like, think about um, a magician when they used to put the, put the ladies in the box and put a, put a knife through them and chop them in half. That's a transverse plane. Or you can chop a person, <laughs> I use more chop a person, uh, from front to back. So if you're dividing them front to back, it's a frontal plane. All right, so sagittal, one G, two T's. You guys misspell that a lot. That basically divides you left and right. If it's right down the middle, you call it the mid-sagittal or median plane. You can also have a sagittal cut, which is basically left to right. It's off to the side. It may be, you know, off to the side, left to right. And that's parasagittal. It would be left parasagittal or right parasagittal, depending on where you made the cut. Uh, frontal plane, also called coronal plane, divides you front to back. Transverse plane divides you top to bottom, superior to inferior. And every once in a while you'll see an oblique cut, and that's, an, uh, that's basically a diagonal cut. So you're most commonly going to see these uh, associated with uh, imaging. Um, and so you've got to know what the cut was, what the plane was that you're looking at. So this is basically a frontal uh, section. So they basically did probably an MRI, something like that, then a frontal section, and you're looking at the lungs and the heart, and this is the liver. You don't have to know that. This is a frontal section. You're basically seeing inside the body cavity. 
transverse section, you're basically looking down on the person. So you're seeing their spleen. It's like you've cut them in half, and now you're looking down inside their body. See their pancreas, uh, vertebra and spinal cord, liver. Or you can do a sagittal plane, which is basically you cut them this way. Or, I mean, sorry, cut them. Yeah, sagittal, cut them this way. <laughs> yeah, cut them this way. Now you're looking at them from the side. So you've cut them from the side, and you're seeing the backbone go this way, and you see the, the lungs and things like that. So you guys going into x-ray technology, you definitely will become familiar with your planes because you've got to know what section to take uh, of, a, of an image. Okay, are we all alike? No, we're mostly alike. 90% uh, of all of our stuff is the same. If you did an autopsy on me uh, and, and you or your classmates, most of us will be the same. But there's a few things that are different. You may have an extra nerve. You may be missing a blood vessel. I may have an extra one. There's a few changes. I might have an extra muscle or my muscle may not be quite as big. Um, so there's a few things. You might have a an extra kidney, I may have one kidney, you may have three. You might have an extra testicle if you're a guy, you may only have one testicle. So there's a few things that, um, and a lot of times those are not that big a deal. Now, if there's what's called a birth defect, you know, where you're some gross abnormality where something's really wrong, and I don't mean gross as in, ew, that's gross, I mean like a large abnormality, uh, that can be fatal, like a heart defect or maybe a brain defect. Those can be uh, not, uh, not conducive to life. Um, but then a cool one is, is basically when you're anatomically reversed. And typically, when you look at a person, you know, the heart kind of sits off like that. And you have your lungs, and you know, your liver's on, your liver's over here, and everything like that. Sometimes people are born with everything backwards. So their heart kind of hangs off on this side, and their liver's over here. So they're just completely reversed. Everything's normal, they're just reversed. And usually those people know that and they'll tell you that they're anatomically reversed because when you go to listen to their heart or try to feel their liver, it won't be where you expect it to be. And so they'll tell you, hey, I'm, I'm an anatomical reverse. And so you have to adjust and, and feel for things and listen for things on another side. But they're usually fine, they're usually normal, no problems with that, it's just kind of cool. Okay. Um, when we talk about the body, we have to talk about cavities, and cavities are just spaces. We have the dorsal cavity, we have two main cavities, we have the dorsal cavity and the ventral cavity. Uh, the dorsal cavity is on the back, back of the head, the back of the body, and I'll show you a picture, and it's mostly um, there to protect the nervous system. That's the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. You have the ventral cavity, and that's on the front. And it houses the organs. And the word viscera and organs mean the same thing. Uh, if someone has been, or an animal has been eviscerated, it means they've taken the, the guts out, the organs out, like they've split down the middle. Think of a, a slasher maybe where they cut somebody in the belly and the, and the guts fall out. That's to eviscerate, so viscera means organs. Um, your visceral cavity has two um, divisions, your chest, your thoracic cavity, in your abdominal or your um, belly, your abdominal pelvic cavity. So let's kind of do that as a schematic and help you get your, your bearings. So you have your dorsal cavity and you have your ventral cavity. Those are your two main big cavities. You then break your dorsal cavity into your cranial cavity and your vertebral cavity. Cranial cavity has the brain, vertebral cavity has the spinal cord. That's basically on the back, dorsal. On the ventral side, the front side, you have your abdominal pelvic cavity, which is here, and your thoracic cavity, which is here, okay? Here's your thoracic, here's your abdominal cavity, here's your pelvic cavity, put these together, abdominal pelvic. So <clears throat> you can also divide these even smaller. So abdominal pelvic can then be just abdominal and pelvic, your thoracic cavity can be your or called your pleural cavities, each one has a lung, a pericardial cavity for your heart, and then something called the mediastinum. Um, and so you use these cavities and it gives you a relation to where things are. You know your heart is here, your lungs are here, your digestive organs, kidneys, things like that are here, your bladder and your reproductive organs are here. And there's a picture in your book that helps you um, to 
put your organs in the right place. Okay, uh, when we talk about thoracic cavity, again, we have the pleural cavity for the lungs, we have the mediastinum, <coughs> which actually includes the pericardial cavity. So the mediastinum is actually this whole thing, and the pericardial cavity is a part of it. Uh, and then you have the pericardial cavity for the heart, abdominal cavity, stomach, intestines, spleen, liver, um, pelvic cavity, your bladder, reproductive organs, and your rectum. All right, now, these kidney, uh, kidneys, these cavities uh, have to have some kind of a lining, okay? There has to be some kind of boundary. And so those are your serous membranes. And your serous, not serious membranes like serious XM, or I'm, I'm really a serious person, but they're serous or serosa membranes. So these serous membranes are basically double layered membranes. So they have two layers and they are separate. They have a fluid, this little serous fluid. And basically what that allows uh, for is for these organs to move. Um, if you take your hands and do that, start to generate heat. So think about your, your heart in there pumping away, and it needs to be able to move without friction so it doesn't generate heat. And so this serosal fluid, this serous fluid, allows organs to move. Um, so if you have a cavity, so let's like say this is the heart cavity, so this is, this is the heart, okay? The membrane that is right along the heart, that's on top of the heart, is the visceral membrane. In this case, it's the visceral pericardium. And the membrane that um, lines the wall is the parietal pericardium. So parietal means it lines the wall of the cavity, and visceral means it actually is sitting on top of or in contact with the actual organ. <clears throat> so in this case, here we go, we have our heart. You see the double walled layer. The layer adjacent to the heart is the visceral pericardium. The layer along the cavity is the parietal pericardium. Let me go back one more time. There's two more membranes you need to know, um, and those are the that line the pleural cavity, which are the lungs, and the abdominal cavity. And when you talk about the uh, abdominal cavity, it's called the peritoneum. So let's just kind of talk through that. So here's your lung, okay? So the lining that's on the lung would be the visceral pleura. The, oh, scare me, somebody can't try to come in. <laughs> the lining that lines the cavity that the lung is in, the pleural cavity, is called the parietal pleura. In the abdomen, so here's all your guts, the lining that's on top of the abdominal organs is called the visceral peritoneum, and the lining that lines the abdominal cavity is called the parietal peritoneum. So you need to know the visceral and uh, parietal pericardium, the visceral and parietal pleura, the visceral and parietal peritoneum, and which cavities those are associated with, and which one's on the organ, and which one is lining the cavity. All right, and when we talk about anatomy, <coughs> we like to have uh, ways to, to uh, determine where things are, because that's what anatomy is, where is it? And so sometimes we use what are called regions, and sometimes we use quadrants. Um, and this is an example of the, quadra uh, the regions. There are nine of them. And these are kind of, these, these date back, you know, hundreds of years ago. They're, they're kind of the old timey way of doing it. Um, but they're still, they're still in use, so you want to make sure you're familiar with them. Basically, you draw a tic-tac-toe grid. This is just abdominal, not thoracic. So just abdominal and divide it into nine regions. Uh, and umbilical is around the belly button. Epigastric means upon the stomach. So this is your epigastric. You have your left and right hypochondriac left and right lumbar, your low back is your lumbar region, and left and right iliac or inguinal. This is your iliac or inguinal area. Hypochondriac comes from, uh, it's below the ribs, and when we talk about the ribs, we'll talk about uh, chondral, cardinal, uh, the, 
the cartilages that are associated with the um, ribs. So that's below the ribs. And so if you were to peel away the skin, you would see the, in the muscles, you'd see the organs. And so what you've learned to recognize is that the liver is mostly in the right hypochondriac region. The gallbladder is there. Parts of the uh, ascending colon are there. Your stomach is mostly in the epigastric. Your bladder is in the hypogastric or pubic region. So you learn to recognize where organs are. Now, most of the time you're going to learn the quadrants. This is what's kind of more common. And again, you use, you use the belly button as your cross point. Draw an X or a T. And you say, okay, where, where is most of the organ? So most of the organ is in the, the liver, right upper. Most of the stomach is in left upper. Uh, your appendix is in the right lower. Most of your uh, descending colon is in the left lower. Your transverse colon is kind of across both the upper quadrants. Um, so it's really not a really good way to describe where, the, where that is. And it's also not a good way to describe where the bladder is. You say, where's the bladder? Well, it's somewhere between the right and left lower quadrants. That doesn't tell me a lot. So in that case, you would want to say the bladder is in the hypogastric region. So sometimes quadrants are sufficient and sometimes you want to be more specific. And so just um, there's some practice things in your lab guide on where things are. And just so just use these figures to kind of get an idea of where the organs are in relation to their quadrants and their regions. Again, it does not apply to the heart and lungs. Uh, there are a few more cavities associated with the body, some smaller ones, your oral and digestive cavities, your mouth. Uh, nasal cavity is your nose. This is where your eyes are. You have your middle ear cavity. Um, a lot of times you see the word otic as in reference to the ear. And then synovial cavities, and these are in your joints. There's actually spaces between where your bones come together. Those things that pop, those are your synovial cavities. And they allow your bones to move against each other without creating friction. They can smoothly move against each other. Okay, so that's all that we covered in class and lab uh, as far as body organization. And that's going to be the end of this lecture, and I'm sure I'll see you again.